Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have eight new coastal Thanksgiving DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I had a lot of fun on these. The first DIY we're going to make is some mermaid corn. So I got this idea off of a blog. I'll be sure to link it in the description below, but I've always wanted to do this. I picked up some Indian corn or ornamental corn at the grocery store. I was a little shocked by how expensive this stuff was, but isn't it beautiful? Now the instructions say to take fabric dye. I got writ dye in teal and you can dye the corn husks. So we're gonna give that a try. I want my corn husk to be teal and we're gonna call it mermaid corn. I think that's really fun. So I just grabbed three jars from the Dollar Tree that I had and I'm pouring in hot water, water that I heated up in the microwave. I did about one and a half cups in each jar, um, but I would probably suggest doing one cup because I think I made mine a little too deep. Now to mine, I did one and a half cups, so I'm gonna add three tablespoons of dye to each one of these. This one is actually just a Dollar Tree vase, so I was trying to figure out what I had. And the reason why I say to do one cup instead of one and a half cups is because this will dye your corn too, and I did have that happen a little bit. So um, learn from me. <laughs> so I'm going through and adding my third tablespoon to each one of those. Again, I got it really hot, the water, so that it would dye it. And I was surprised by how quickly they did dye. Now to dye them, I'm just gonna grab the corn and push it down into the jars. You kind of have to fold it in half to kind of get it in your jar. And I was trying to be careful because I didn't want to break the corn husk. I, and until it's wet, it's not that pliable. And then I kind of push it down underneath the teal dye. And this worked great. I'm sure you could probably, um, you know, thin down paint if you didn't have any dye and kind of make a stain that way and you could kind of brush it on. That might be another option. But this was the way that uh, the blog suggested and I had the dye already. So I thought, let's give it a chance. Now I'm gonna like try to make sure that all of the corn husk is submerged under the dye. So I'm just going in there with like a plastic fork, kind of pushing it all down. I was a little worried that the corn would die because um, I had like about an inch of it that was a little submerged there and it did die. You'll be able to see that here in a minute. I had to try to cover it up a little bit. But basically that is it for the dyeing. I just took this and set it aside for about 30 minutes. It kind of died a lot faster than I thought it would. And then it's just a matter of drying it out. Now for the tray, I wanted to do something fun. And um, this was the only color tray I could find at the Dollar Tree, it's like silver. But that's okay, we can always paint it and make it our own. So I'm gonna mix some ivory acrylic with some antique wax by Waverly, get this beautiful like shade of like driftwood color. And we're just gonna go ahead and paint the tray. This is one of my favorite trays from the Dollar Tree. It's plastic, but it's kind of heavy duty. And I love like the little um, bumps around the edges. I think that's a nice detail. So I'm just going over the whole thing, trying to cover up the metallic gleam of the silver. And then once I get that on there, I'm gonna go back and distress it with some Antique Wax by Waverly. But first I'm gonna dry it and then just working in one direction like that with like a chippy brush, just doing like a faux wood grain all over. It also helps to bring out all those little details around the edges. It was a little dark, so I'm gonna go back in with my original color. And I did have to do, you know, just a couple of coats of these things too, because I was trying to cover up that super shiny metallic that was underneath. But that's kind of what the vibe I was going for, just like a driftwood tray to kind of make it look like it's wood. 
And I think it looks a lot better than it did to begin with. I think this is going to be a perfect place to display our mermaid corn. I think this is a really fun idea. I saw this idea a couple of years ago, I think before I even have my YouTube channel maybe, and I've always wanted to do it, so I'm so glad I pulled it off. Now, if you're not so lucky to be able to find any of the ornamental or Indian corn at your grocery store, Dollar Tree does sell the fake kind, but you know, it's not gonna be as pretty. Now to decorate the tray, I wanted some coastal touches. So I have one of these little ceramic starfish from the Dollar Tree. These are from the Shore Living line that comes out every spring, summer at Dollar Tree. And I like it, it's white, but it was super shiny. So to make it matte finish, I just go over the whole thing with a couple coats of ivory acrylic, and it's really gonna make it look like a bleached out starfish. It's got this great like bumpy texture on it. I love DIYing with these. As you guys know, I always try to stock up on my shore living items for the whole year because I do coastal for every season. I've had some people asking about how to get shore living right now, and I'm like, you can get lucky every now and then, but you really kind of have to stock up and it'll be back in the spring. I hope it, this would, uh, let's see. I think it's going to be the fourth year. I know one of my stores had it a year before a lot of Dollar Trees had it, but I absolutely love it. So I soaked it for 30 minutes and this is what we've got. I just kind of tear off some of the broken ones. Some of the Indian corn didn't have as much as of, of the husk attached, but that's okay because I've got three of them that I'm going to kind of pile on that tray. So I just kind of blot it down with some paper towels to help start the drying process on it. Again, it's super wet. It's been soaking in that dye for 30 minutes. And here is my second one. As you can tell, it's a really fun like teal color. I think it turned out really good. It was definitely what I had in mind for this project. And I'm just trying to dry it up a little bit, clean it up. If any of the corn husks are ripped, I don't really want them. So I just go ahead and peel those off. And here is their corn number three. They all died really well. Again, I thought this was going to take a couple of hours. I was really surprised with how quickly um, it did take the dye. But doesn't that look cool? It's definitely a fun take on this corn. I think it's so beautiful already, but adding blue to it just makes it extra special for me. So that's where you can kind of see how I accidentally dyed some of the corn. I was trying to wipe it off but really no such luck. The corn actually dies pretty well. But I got a good start on the drying process. I kind of went over it with my heat gun a little bit, but again, corn husks were pretty soaked. So I do kind of just have to set these aside and let them dry before I go too far on this tray. I did find that I liked the corn husks a little better when some of them were broken up a little bit smaller. And as you can tell, they're all a little bit different, but I think that's okay. But I got a good start on the drying process. And then what I did was just kind of sit these to the side on paper towels and let them dry a little bit more. Just make sure to clean up any of your dye. I just got a new mat. I was trying not to dye it. And then I got them dry. So now we can go ahead and decorate our tray. I'm just going to kind of lay them side by side here, again, trying to clean up the husk the best that I can. And two of them were a little bit more similar, and so I'm going to kind of try to mix them up a little bit. This one really didn't have as much of the husk attached, but just kind of like figuring out how I like them. I kind of liked the different one in the middle, and then I just kind of wanted to sit them kind of in a pile. At first, I thought about tying them together and making a door hanging for my door. Um, and I think that would be really cool too, but I decided to kind of just make mine a centerpiece like this. So I'm just kind of messing with them, kind of seeing how I like them. And then I was like, you know, you can really tell that I dyed some of the corn blue. So I kind of wanted to bundle them together anyway. So I'm just going to use some of this burlap ribbon. I got this at Pop Shelf the other day for $2 and I'm going to just tie them together. That way it will kind of cover up the part that I accidentally dyed blue. So again, one cup of water. 
<laughs> not one and a half cups. I just didn't think one cup of water was going to be enough, but you know what? I think it probably would have. So I just tied the burlap on there, making them a bundle, and it helps them kind of stack on top of each other too, which is kind of what I wanted. And then I don't really want to do a bow or anything like that, so I'm just going to tie a simple knot. And I love that ribbon. It's so pretty. I have a lot of burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, but I don't have anything in this size. And I've been using it a lot, so I might have to skip back over to another town to go to a pop shop again. And that way it kind of disguised the parts there that I that I accidentally, you know, um, dyed blue. And it kind of serves decorative and it bundles them together. Now I wanted to decorate the rest of the tray with things that were coastal and things that were fall for Thanksgiving. So I had painted that starfish. And then my plan was to use these little blue sweater pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. They do have these little clips on the bottom. You do kind of have to get them hot to kind of peel them off. That way you don't rip any of the fabric or anything like that when you go to remove the little clips. And I wanted to de decorate um, my tray with these little blue sweater pumpkins. I went ahead and got them all on there, kind of arranged them, and then I really wasn't a big fan of it. I thought they were just a little bit too big. I didn't think they really fit on the tray very well, so I'm actually going to replace them, but I still kind of wanted to show you what it looked like at this point. So it's pretty full, but again, I thought I could do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna start with some Spanish moss just to fill up any of the bottom tray. And it's gonna give a little decor too. And this is just some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. I'm not going very thick with it at all, just around the edges where it's gonna be visible. And then I can go back and set my little bundle of corn here. And I think that's gonna go with the beachy vibe. That way I can kind of display that beautiful starfish like right there in front. And then I wanted a little blue pumpkin and I didn't have one small enough. So I'm just going to take one of these little ivory pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to paint this with some turquoise. A lot of the DIYs we're going to do today are like either like a teal and white or a turquoise and white. I really went with the blue color scheme today for my Thanksgiving DIYs. And again, if you don't do blue or coastal for your holidays, you know what? You could do these any colors that you wanted. But I think it's really fun dyeing the corn husks. I, I think that was a fun experiment and we're actually gonna be doing more of that since I already have that dye mixed up. Now for the little stem, I didn't really like how it looked so plasticky, so, what I did was brighten it up with a little ivory and then went back with some antique wax by Waverly to kind of make the stem look a little bit better. And I'm only gonna do one of the little blue pumpkins. I really think I only have enough room for one without overcrowding it. But I'm gonna put it right there next to my starfish and we have our first DIY. We have mermaid corn. Um, from the grocery store and supplies from the Dollar Tree. Look how beautiful the corn husks are and that teal color. It's a very unexpected and fun. And I'm really glad that I did this DIY. I think it's so fun. I can't wait to display it for Thanksgiving. I think uh, you could also add some seashells and stuff like that to yours if you wanted. My tray was a little bit skinny, so I didn't feel like I wanted to overcrowd it. Now for the next DIY, we're going to use some more corn husks. These are also from the grocery store. Um, mine, uh, you know, people make tamales with these. So the Mexican food section. And so if your grocery store doesn't carry these, I know some of you guys said that yours didn't. You might want to check if you have like a Mexican grocery store or something like that. You're definitely going to be able to find them there. But it's a great way to get dried corn husks like this. Now I want to make a, um, a Thanksgiving wreath with these. I think that will look really fun. And I'm going to use one of these little wood bead wreaths from the Dollar Tree. But I want my syrups to be a lot skinnier. And this stuff just breaks so easily. It's so easy to do just to kind of shred these. Just kind of feel and rip and they tear exactly the way you want. I still kind of want like a pointed end and a wider end. But we're not just going to leave these like regular corn husks with the um you know natural wood beads even though that would be pretty we're gonna go ahead and do the blue with these as well and since i already have the dye mixed up and it's still hot i think that we can go ahead and 
dye these two. Now I went ahead and shredded more than I needed for the wreath so that I could use these in some more DIYs today, but basically just shredded all of those. I'm going to pop those in my larger vase here, and then I'm just gonna pour all the dye in there so we can like, you know, get this super deep and we can kind of push all the corn husks down in the dye. And again, I just set these aside for like 30 minutes or so and they dyed really well, just like the ones with the Indian corn. I do kind of have to push them down in there a little bit to make sure that everything is covered with the dye. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of like dyeing Easter eggs, I guess. So again, this was just writ, writ dye, and the color that I'm using is teal. So I set that aside for about 30 minutes, let it dye, and then we're gonna grab these, pull these out, put down plenty of paper towels so I don't have a huge mess. And mine actually all came out in one big clump. And I think it looks really pretty. And I think that's gonna be a really fun take on the corn husks for the little Thanksgiving wreath that I'm gonna do. It's definitely gonna add a coastal touch and kind of continue that mermaid corn theme. So I just kind of pat them dry, but then I also had to let them sit to dry it further because they were really wet. Now for the wood bead wreath form, this is just the natural wood. I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna tie them. I decided to use twine instead of zip ties. That way I could fit it in between the wood beads, kind of hide it in there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take a group. So I'm gonna do about four of the dyed little corn husks. And then we are just going to tie those down. I was wanting to cover up the little part where it comes together there with the metal part. And I thought I might as well just hide that um, while I'm doing this. So I just pull it through the wooden beads on the back, lay down my corn husk, and then I'm just gonna tie a knot in the front. Um, and it was very secure way to attach these. And I'm going to overlap the corn husks on every row. So it's gonna kind of cover that up. And I don't wanna do the whole wreath form because of course I love like the wood beads on there. I think that's really pretty. And I think um, just about half of it. So I just skipped down two beads, that putting my twine in between those two beads so I kind of know where to go and just tie off another bundle. I'm not sure, I'm trying to not tie them too close to the end because I wanna make sure this is secure and that the corn husks don't fall out. So again, I skip two beads and then I am just tying down four more. I was thinking at first that I was gonna have to go back in with more to make sure that you can't see the twine, but it's actually pretty full in the end and I didn't really have to worry about that. So I was just trying to find four. I like them a little bit different, a little bit of variety in them. Try not to get them too curly, even though I noticed that while these dried, um, they did kind of get curlier, but it kind of looks really cool. They kind of look wild. <laughs> and I think this is a really fun idea for a Thanksgiving wreath. It's really hard to find Thanksgiving DIYs. Not a lot of people do them. Most people just skip Thanksgiving and move straight to Christmas. But I promise y'all Thanksgiving content. And so I am trying to deliver. And I just keep continuing that down. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do like a third, a fourth of the wreath. I ended up doing near, near a half of it. Um, and then I was happy with it. So I'm just gonna keep tying these on four at a time every two beads until I'm happy with it. And then for the end, it will be kind of exposed with the twine at the end, but I do have a plan for something that we can make to cover that up and it's gonna give it a little bit more Thanksgiving fun. So I was thinking, is that enough? I decided one more row. <laughs> and just tying that and cutting off the excess twine. And you can see that it's nice and full. You really can't see any of the twine or anything that's under it. And I just kind of have to find a way to cover the base and kind of make that look prettier. I'm also gonna cut a piece of twine for the top 
And I'm just going to tie a simple hanger here by looping it through and knotting it at the top. So that's how I'm going to hang it. I'm going to kind of have that swooping over to the left like that. I think that looks really beautiful. And the corn husks dyed that teal blue color. It's so beachy and fun. And again, if you had a different color scheme, I think these would look great dyed any color that you could think of. Now for the sign, I want to do a little sign here at the end to cover up the end of the corn husks. I decided to use one of these little wood slices from the Dollar Tree that comes in a two pack. I think the scale is nice. It looks nice and rustic. So it's kind of going to go with my vibe on this, but I wanted something Thanksgiving to put on it. So I designed this image with AI. It is a little turkey on the beach and I will share the uh, free printable for you in the description below if you would like to recreate. So I sized it like, I think it's like 3.75 inches in a circle like this which is about the size of the inside of mine. You know, if yours is a little bit smaller or larger, you might need to resize it. First, I cut out a circle, but I didn't like how perfect that looked. So I went back and kind of did like a curvy line all the way around. That, that way it kind of went more with like the log feel of how it's not a perfect circle. And I think that's really fun, the little turkey on the beach. It's definitely gonna go with my coastal Thanksgiving theme. Now to attach it to the little wood slice, I just do a layer of Mod Podge and I printed mine out on cardstock. I love to print on cardstock. I think it's easier to work with and it's much easier to Mod Podge than just regular thin paper. Then I can just go over it immediately with a second top coat there. And then I can just go in and give that a quick dry with my heat gun. But I'm gonna go back in with one more thin coat to make sure it's good and sealed. Now I wanted to distress mine a little bit just to make it not so perfect, a little bit more coastal farmhouse. So I kind of distressed just in one direction and wiping off any excess. I'm completely out of my brushes that I used to distress with and I'm ha having trouble finding them at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna have to go hopping some stores, I think. But I think that looks good. It goes with my vibe and I'm just gonna use that to finish off this Thanksgiving wreath. Such a fun image of the little turkey on the beach. Now I thought to help secure it, I would just put some more of that twine, glue that to the back of my wood slice so I could have something that I could tie onto the wreath. But I'm also going to glue it too. So I'm kind of seeing exactly how I want it to sit. And then I'm just gonna put glue right there on the corn husk, like lay my little wood slice on there and flip it over and then I can just kind of tie it to the wood bead wreath just kind of like we did with all of the corn husks. And the twine actually worked really well for this. I just reinforce it with a little bit more hot glue to make sure it's nice and strong. And we have a really fun mermaid corn husk wood bead wreath for Thanksgiving. So coastal and fun. I bet you've never seen a wreath like this. <laughs> I try to bring you guys unique projects. <laughs> and this is how it turned out. I love those wood bead wreaths. I've been DIYing with those a lot more. Um, at first, I really wasn't that crazy over them, but now I am in love with them. And I think that little turkey on the beach really finishes the wreath off nicely and screams Thanksgiving. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. You'll find out when I post new videos and you'll get to see what everyone else has been DIYing. I also have Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, for the next DIY, we're gonna take some of these little metal candle holders from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna give them a coastal Thanksgiving makeover. We're gonna add them to these little chunky wood um, hanging decor from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna use some beachy blue long taper candles. Now for the little wood chunky pieces, I'm just gonna cut the hanger off of those. And then I didn't really like the gold color on the candlestick, so, I'm gonna go in and paint mine a beachy color. I wanted it to kind of look like sand. And I do have this khaki colored spray paint. 
And I find that works the best for metal things like this. So I'm going to grab them. We're going to go outside and we're going to spray paint these real quick with one coat of spray paint. They painted really nicely and dried really quickly. Now they have little circles on them as you can see and my plan is to cover the little circles with some Dollar Tree sand dollars. Now these are from the Shore Living line too. Sometimes they're a little bit grayer than I would like so I'm going to give mine a quick makeover first. Just going over them with some ivory acrylic paint just to brighten them up make them look like bleached. Um, sand dollars and it's going to make them look less like plastic which they are made out of plastic and make them look like they're more real. So I just give them a couple of coats until I'm happy with them and I thought these would be the perfect thing to cover the little circles on the little candle holders to make them extra coastal. Now for the bases, I wanted to make them more substantial which is why we're going to add these little chunky circles to them. But I also want these to be decorative too. So we're going to cover these with some burlap. This is just a scrap piece of burlap that I have from the Dollar Tree. But I think it's going to be plenty to cover these. Now I noticed when I set the burlap on them, you could still see the fact that they had like hanging holes on them. And so I'm just going to go in with a little bit of Dollar Tree spackle and just simply fill those up so you can't see that through the burlap. I love crafting with these things. I think they're so versatile and fun. I'm going to go ahead and cut out a square for each one of our little circles here. And we can always cut those down to size after we glue them on. I'm just going to use a Mod Podge. And I'm going to do a nice healthy coat here to make sure that there is enough to kind of seep through the burlap and glue that on there. And I have a different plan for the edges of them. That's going to be easier than trying to cut that burlap down to size. I don't want it to fray or anything like that. Now, once I get it on there, I also went over the top of it with another coat of Mod Podge to make sure that it is super wet. So I'm using a sponge brush, sponge brush from the Dollar Tree, and I just kind of push that sponge down to make sure that that glue really saturates it. I dried them with my heat gun and then I'm just going in with some super sharp fabric scissors and cutting them as close as I can to the wood, trying to still kind of get a nice circular shape. And that one looks pretty good. We're going to do the same thing here on the other one. Now we're going to attach the little metal candle holders to these. And I think burlap's a great option because it's got all the holes in it. So I'm going to be able to glue it down directly to the wood. Now for the sides, we're going to use that burlap ribbon that I got at Pop Shelf again. And it's the perfect size for the sides on this. So I'm just going to hot glue it all the way around. That way it stays nice and tight. And this burlap goes great with the Dollar Tree burlap. And it was a really fun, easy way to cover the bases of these. I don't really want any of the edges sticking out, so I just kind of make sure everything's kind of secure and tucked down in there. And then we're going to do the same thing here with our second candle holder. And I've had those little candle um, sticks for a couple of months and I had no idea what to do with them. And I'm glad that I finally figured out something to DIY. I knew I could make them into something cool. On their own, they're a little small. And I thought they could be more spectacular, so that's where we're going to make them. So our bases are complete, and we're just going to sit them right on top. I think that it's going to be a really good size. But first, I think we should go ahead and attach the sand dollars. Now, the sand dollars fit in there just perfectly, barely, barely enough room for the candle, but there is. And I actually just glue mine to the top, just kind of looking to see where it's going to be the best place to contact those. Now I want these where I can use them on the table. So I want them to be beautiful from both sides. So we're going to do a sand dollar on the front and a sand dollar on the back, just gluing them both to the metal ring. And it's basically going to cover up the entire metal ring. We're going to do the same thing here on the second one. And you know, you can like put these with like sand dollars together. You can put them with sand dollars apart. You can put them on each end of your table. You can get creative with these. But it actually turned out really good. And I was really happy that I made these. I think these are going to look so great on my table for Thanksgiving. Now I do add a little extra hot glue down in between. 
But then I didn't really like the fact that you could kind of see like the metal ring down inside. So I am going to disguise that in a minute and I'll show you that. But at first I just decided to try to just paint the sides of the sand dollars. But I was thinking, you know, these are going to be on my Thanksgiving table. You're definitely going to be able to see inside of those. So I actually did decide to fill in that crevice in between. And I'm really glad that I did because I think it makes them look so much better. So to do that, I'm just going to use Dollar Tree Spackle again. And just take some of it and kind of push it down. But, you know, the void is not very big, but it's going to kind of give it more of a like a sea biscuit thickness if you're looking at it from the top. But I think it looks a lot better than being open like that and being able to see that gold ring underneath. So I just start like at the, where the candle holder is and kind of go around anywhere that you're going to be able to see it, just kind of filling in that gap. And again, I'm really glad that I decided to do this step because I think it made them look so much more high end. And this stuff dries pretty fast. It paints well too. So it really kind of all blends in in the end. And this is why, you know, we painted the sand dollars ivory. So once I get them dry, I did have to go in and kind of paint the spackle, the ivory color, just to make it all blend in. And doesn't that look so much better? I'm really glad I decided to fill that up. Now, once I get these all filled in and painted, then we can go ahead and start assembling our candle holder. I have the burlap base, which is gonna be nice and heavy and is larger than the metal candlestick. And I'm actually just gonna glue that down with hot glue. I know hot glue and metal doesn't always work great. I am gonna add some extra reinforcements to this. But, you know, if you're not doing a crafting video like I was, you might have more time. You might be able to use some stronger glue. And I just kind of center that right down onto my candle holder. And we're going to do the same thing here with our second one. So it's just a bead along the metal candle holder and lay it right on top. And again, they are gonna need a little bit more reinforcement because that hot glue in the metal is not gonna be too permanent, but this is what they look like so far. The khaki color that I painted the metal candlestick is not too different than the gold color they were before, but I kind of like it better like this. You could always cover yours with a little brown sand if you wanted to, because we're gonna make them nice and beachy. Now for the candles, I found these great blue colored paper candles from the Dollar Tree and I thought these would be great for like a coastal Thanksgiving theme. At first I thought about painting them um, with my Posca paint pen so I'm going to design on there. I couldn't really think of anything that I really wanted to put on them so I decided just to leave mine plain blue this time. They fit in here very nicely. You just kind of have to wedge them down. They don't really move around at all, which is going to make them even safer to burn. So we're just going to go ahead and put both of those in. You might want to reinforce yours a little bit before you do this because you do kind of have to add a little bit of pressure on there. But like I said, it was kind of a tight fit with the sand dollar on there, but we made it work. Now to reinforce it, I'm just going to go around the outside with a bead of hot glue. And we're also going to go back and add another layer to that. So you can't really see the hot glue on there and it's going to actually reinforce it a little bit. But I let that glue set up and then I decided just to add a little bit of white. So the macrame cord from the Dollar Tree, we're just going to do one row of that all the way around. Hot gluing that down too and that's going to really give something that's going to connect the metal candle holder to our burlap base. And it matches the sand dollar, so I think it's going to look nice with the color scheme on this one. Now, like I said, you could add sand to the bottom of these because we are going to decorate them a little bit more to make them a little bit more coastal with some seashells, of course. But again, just the macrame cord all the way around. I kind of did my seams on the side where it'd be a little bit less noticeable. And this is what they look like so far. I think they're looking nice and fun and really sturdy. Now for the seashells, we're going to use these little shells that you get in the glass bottles at the Dollar Tree. I kind of want a variety of different shells, but kind of going with our color scheme. 
of the white and tan and kind of alternate them so they're kind of like mirror images of each other. That way when you're looking at them they'll have different shells on them and I'm just going to hot glue those down that's why I was saying if you wanted to add a little bit of sand to these you totally could I thought about it but I kind of wanted the cleanness of just a metal top on them like that to be on my kitchen table and I just secure them all with hot glue and this DIY is complete. I think we took those little metal candlestick holders from the Dollar Tree and made them really beachy and fun for Thanksgiving. And I love the color of those candles. I think that's the first time I've seen them in that color. It definitely goes with the color scheme that we're using today. Aren't they cute? This is what they look like with like the candles closer to each other. I kind of went back and forth about turning them different ways to see how they look, but I kind of like them like that. Okay, for the next DIY, we're gonna use one of these little Be Thankful metal buckets from the Dollar Tree. It kind of has like blue leaves on it, white pumpkins, cause it, so it really kind of goes with our color scheme. And I thought we could make a little coastal Thanksgiving flower arrangement. I didn't really have any of the round foam to go inside, so we're just going to take some spare foam and cut it down to pieces, kind of fill it up. And we're gonna use some fall flowers that are blue and some of the little mini pumpkins and gourds from the Dollar Tree to fill this up. I thought at first about adding some of those coral ornaments. Um, I did decide against that. I didn't really think it needed them. Now I just go in and fill in my foam with some Spanish moss. And I, you know, I have some leftover of the corn husks and we're actually have another DIY project with, with more of the dyed corn husks. So I thought these matched the flowers perfectly. So I just go around the edges of the 10 bucket, just adding a little bit more character to it. Now I only have one um, of these little blue flowers from the Dollar Tree. They're the hydrangeas and I think they're so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them all individually so we can arrange those in the foam. I'm kind of avoiding the green leaves on there because I don't, I don't really think that goes with fall very much, but these are one of the fall flowers. And I didn't think at first I was gonna have enough to fill up this whole bucket, but it actually did a pretty good job because we're also gonna go back and we're gonna make little fall picks out of the little gourds from the Dollar Tree. Now they're already white, but they do kind of have like a black speckled pattern, kind of like the Easter eggs at the Dollar Tree. And I don't really like how they're painted. So I'm gonna choose like two of the gourds and one of the pumpkins, and we're gonna make little, little picks using some of these skewers from the Dollar Tree. I thought we could go ahead and put them on the skewers. It's gonna make them a little bit easier to paint. And I think three is gonna be a perfect number. Now the skewers are way too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of cut them in half. That's gonna make them right about the right length. And then just stick those right in the bottom. That way I can use those to hold them while we paint them, but then it's also gonna serve the purpose of attaching those into the floral arrangement. Now again, they're already white and we're just going from white to ivory. So it's not a big change and I'm just doing one coat. I just wanted to kind of soften them up and soften up that black speckle pattern on there. I wasn't a big fan of that. This squirt is kind of a really unusual shape, but I kind of like it, it's kind of cool. And again, I'm not really adding any coastal things to this. It's all really kind of coastal colors on this, but the colors of these flowers really match the dyed corn husks that we did for these. And I think it's gonna look really good together. Again, it's not real big either. If you wanted to use this like on a Thanksgiving tear tray or something like that, I think that would work really well too. But it is large enough just to put on your shelf. I'm just going to put those in there, one coming out each side. And this one was really quick and easy, a little be thankful pail full of blue florals for Thanksgiving. Aren't those flowers really pretty? They're almost the perfect shade to match that dyed corn husk from our mermaid corn. And I love DIYing with those little metal buckets from the Dollar Tree. This one is so pretty with the be thankful on there and the white pumpkins. 
Again, not really that coastal compared to some of the other DIYs we did today, but definitely coastal colors. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos. And to join, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to my channel and hit the join button and you're in. Now for our next DIY, we're gonna take one of these little wooden turkey signs from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna give it a coastal Thanksgiving makeover. I start just by removing the hanger on it and kind of deciding which way I wanted mine to go. And we're gonna give it just a really quick driftwood stain by mixing some ivory acrylic paint together with some Antique Wax by Waverly. Gives me this perfect shade of driftwood. And I just go over that raw wood turkey all with one coat. It's kind of almost just a stain. I didn't want anything too thick, but look at that really cool wood grain that's left behind. Now, these are the remaining corn husks that we dyed teal, and I thought these would make great turkey feathers. Now, I don't want them just to be the blue color. I thought we would mix it up, so we're gonna use some of the regular colored corn husks as well. I just go ahead and make a new hanger for it now that my paint is dry on there and by tying a knot there on the top and look how cool feathers the little corn husks make. I thought this would be a really fun idea and it really turned out really decorative and fun. Again, I kind of want to mix it up with these regular corn husks. And so I'm just going kind of maybe like a half an inch to an inch. I just peel them apart into strips like that and they make perfect little feathers. We're gonna go ahead and leave like the entire sign intact. All the little bumps on the back there for the feathers will be covered up by these. And I kind of wanna just alternate randomly. So I'm just gonna go through every feather and we are just going to glue one of the little plain corn husks right down. Kind of having it go way off the side of the turkey, it's gonna be kind of big and fluffy. So I just do one of the natural color corn husks in each one. And you can see they're all a little bit different, but it kind of adds to the character. Now, these are the corn husks that we dyed um, teal with the fabric dye. And I'm just going through and we are just hot gluing one of those in between each one of the other feathers. And we're just gonna keep doing this, repeating that pattern until we have a big fluffy turkey tail. We're gonna leave like the head and neck and body and the feet, all of it, just that driftwood color because I think we're gonna get plenty of decor here with the feathers. And I really like mixing the dyed corn husks with the regular corn husks like this. I think it made it really colorful and fun. Now, I did one of each and it was just still too thin. So we're just gonna go back and just keep adding layers um, until I cover up all of the wood sign behind it so you don't really see any of the wood feathers. You're only going to see the corn husk feathers. So we're going to need a few more. Again, these are super easy to shred and they're really easy to work with. Um, they hot glue really well. I think when you have them in the thinner strips like this, it makes them a little bit easier to work with. In one of my videos last week when I made the corn husk pumpkin, if you leave them all one piece, they're really kind of hard to work with if you don't get them wet first. I do have some more of the blue, so we're gonna go back and do another layer of those two. And we're gonna kind of just keep working at it until it's nice and full. Now I know it kind of looks, you know, unfinished on the edges that we are hot gluing down there, right there in the center part of the turkey, but I do have an idea to go back, add a little bit more decor to this turkey, and kind of cover that area up. But I just wanted to make sure that you really couldn't see any of the little wood feathers in the back. And just gluing that straight to the back feather there if I need to, to cover it up. And I really like this. You can you know, dye those corn husk any color you want. You can kind of do any kind of um, color turkey you wanted. But again, we're doing coastal for this one. So I think the blue and the ivory color goes together great. Now to cover that area where we glued all of our little corn husk feathers down, I thought these little blue fall leaves from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. They come in like two different sizes here and a little bit different color. We're gonna kind of mix them together. So I'm gonna do two of the larger blue ones and then one of the smaller, lighter blue. 
And I thought we could just kind of fan those out. It's going to add a little bit more decor to our turkey here, but it's also going to cover up that area where the corn husks and the wood kind of all come together. So I thought it looked pretty good like that. I also thought about attaching a little thankful tag. I wanted to add some kind of sign to it that said thankful. And this is the little leather tag from the Dollar Tree. And so I just kind of cut the leather strap down where it would fit and hot glue that straight down to our little corn husk feathers. And then we can go back in and layer in the little blue fall leaves and glue those right on top. Now I did get this all put together and then I really didn't like the color of the little brown thankful leaf on there. I thought it kind of took away from all the soft colors on the rest of the turkey. So I do remove that one, but I did have it on here at this point. So here is our last feather. I glued that on and then I was really thinking I didn't really want to paint the leather leaf because I didn't really want I just wanted a little thankful sign, but I really didn't like that dark color. What do you guys think? With or without the little leather leaf? You'll have to let me know in the comments below. I decided without. So I'm just going to go ahead and snip that. Pull that out. And I went in with a paint pen and just drew a quick little eye on our turkey as well. And I think he's perfect and ready to go. Look how beautiful he looks with those bright teal colors. This is a lot of fun, and I think this would make anyone smile on Thanksgiving. Now, if you wanted to do this and make it a stand-up sign, it's pretty easy to convert these signs to stand-up. Or if you wanted to add it to a wood round, it would look really pretty too. But I just kind of left mine all on its own, and I love how it turned out. Now for the next DIY, quick and easy. I have one of these little teal glass bottles from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. It's already got a white starfish tied to it, perfect. And I thought I could combine it with some of this new pampas grass from the Dollar Tree. I think these kind of look a little bit like turkey feathers and I didn't really have any turkey feathers or anything similar. So I thought we could kind of get the same effect with this pampas grass and just kind of fan it out in that little teal vase. I don't have to do anything to the vase. The colors are perfect for all the DIYs we've been doing today. For the pampas grass, I just kind of fan it out a little bit. I'm only gonna use two, but I think that's gonna be plenty to kind of make it look like turkey feathers. And I told you this was gonna be quick and easy. That is how it looks. I love it. I love those little shore living bottles. Again, I always try to stock up on the shore living items like that so that I can use them for different holidays throughout the year. And this is how it turned out. Nice and fluffy. I thought about cutting it to try to make it look more like a feather, but I think they kind of already look like feathers. So I didn't think that was necessary. Quick and easy and only three items from the Dollar Tree. Now for the next DIY, I picked up one of these pumpkins. These are new this year. Aren't these really nice? They're um, nice and chunky. They definitely stand up on their own because they are nice and heavy. I'm just going to remove the bow, the leaf, and flip mine over. I decided it would probably be easier to remake the back of mine than try to cover up the front and worry about the sign and stuff on there that I have to pop off. So I'll just make this a two-sided sign. All I had to do was remove that sticky sticker on the back and then it's ready to paint. Now I didn't really have any paint in the color of teal, so we're gonna kind of mix it by mixing some turquoise and just some like lake blue color. And the sides are already that color, so it's gonna be really easy DIY. I'm just gonna go over the whole thing, the stem and the pumpkin with that teal color and I'm going to do a couple of coats because it's kind of hard to cover the back of those Dollar Tree signs like that. It's kind of that NDF material. It's a little bit harder to paint um, but I probably should have made sure that I got it a little bit more dry than I did because I'm going to use that self-adhesive stencil and they're a little bit stickier than I remember <laughs> but I did do two coats and I did dry it with my heat gun and this little one is so cute. I've used this a couple times in other fall DIYs. I love this print. It's kind of like a wallpaper of fall image. And it's just a giant sticker. It's a little bit larger than the pumpkin. So I think it's going to work perfectly. I'm just going to kind of line it up here with the bottom kind of having it 
slightly cut off on the sides. And it covers everything except for the stem of the pumpkin, so I think that's gonna be perfect. Now for the pattern, I just use a Dollar Tree stencil dauber and some ivory paint. I'm just gonna go over it with one coat. I was a little worried about the stencil adhesive on that, so once I got that painted, I just gave it a quick dry with my heat gun and peeled it off quickly to try to minimize any paint damage. And as you can see, I did have some paint damage, but I think we can salvage it because I did want to add something to it anyway. So I think that's going to work. And I want it to look really coastal for the coastal farmhouse vibe. So just using a standing sponge from the Dollar Tree, I just go all over it to kind of rough it up a little bit. But look how beautiful that pattern is. I think it looks so much better on this side. Now I wanted something coastal to add to it. So I'm going to use a Dollar Tree sand dollar. Again, these are a little bit tinted gray. So I'm just going to give mine a makeover with a little ivory paint. And then we can just attach that sand dollar to the front. You won't be able to see the area that got damaged by the stencil, but be careful with those self-adhesive stencils from the Dollar Tree. They're a little bit stickier than you would think they would be. So I'm just gonna glue mine right on top. It's gonna make this a little bit off-centered um, for where I would probably normally put it, but not too bad. At least it's centered, right? And then I didn't really have enough of that stencil pattern to cover the stem of the pumpkin. So I do wanna go back and kind of decorate that as well. But basically I think that great fall design that we hand painted on there combined with the little sand dollar makes it really beachy and fun. Now this is some of the shore living twine I've been using today. It's the brown and the white. Um, it's kind of like a baker's twine. You can kind of use whatever you have. I just tied mine around the little pumpkin stem and then we're just gonna simply wrap that around to cover the entire stem. Now the sides of it are already teal, so it goes perfectly with the little pumpkin that we DIY'd. This one was quick and easy, but a fun DIY for Thanksgiving, especially if you're going for the coastal theme. I'm just gonna hot glue that once I got it all covered and trim off the excess. And then I thought just a final touch to the top. It already had this little raffia bow on the leaf that was on the other side. So we might as well use it. I think that will look really cute. I just take it off the leaf and hot glue that right there to the pumpkin stem. And this DIY is complete. I think it's so beachy and fun. I absolutely love that fall pattern. And this is how it turned out. I kind of like the distressed feel. Um, that we got from going with that stencil and having to sand it to match it. the scratches that were right there. But I think the sand dollar did a great job of covering that up for us. And this is how it turned out. I love those pumpkins. They're really pretty already. But if you DIY with them, they're even better. Now, this is a, you know, you can't find a whole lot of specific Thanksgiving DIY materials at Dollar Tree, but this is definitely one of them. The little thankful sign. I don't really like the way they do their hangers on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. It's gonna kind of get in the way too as we give this a makeover. I do like the little natural wood frame, so I'm just going to tape that off with some painter's tape and we can go in and paint this and make this look coastal. I wanted to go with like the teal and like the ivory color scheme that we've been doing and make it super beachy. It's already got this brown background though, so I am gonna have to kind of go over that darker color Again, I mix a little turquoise with that like lake blue color to give me this perfect color of teal. And then I'm going in with a brush so that I can kind of get in between all the letters of the word. I kind of wish these came separately because they can be a little bit challenging to paint, as you can see. And the reason I use the brush is so that I can get in all the tops and sides of all the letters. And I also want to kind of go back and get all of the cracks in between the slats on the boards too. And just trying to get as much coverage as I can with that. I did go in with a second coat just to make sure that I got all the brown areas here that were kind of still obvious. And then we'll go in and we'll paint the thankful word a different color, but for now it just kind of has to be blue just because that's how these signs kind of work. It's really hard to paint these really cleanly. Um, usually I go with a Coastal Farmhouse vibe, so I'm going to distress it anyway. So that does kind of hide some of your errors. 
I do go in with a tiny brush here though, just because the paint does kind of pull on the sides of the letters to make sure that everything's covered and we're not going to have any little piles of paint anywhere we don't want it. And I was able to get all of the grooves filled in as well. We can go ahead and remove the painter's tape and clean up any leaky. It wasn't too bad with the bleeding on that. And I really love that color on that sign. I think it's so pretty. Now for the thankful part, I want to paint that ivory. It's really going to pop against that beachy teal sign. To do that, I'm going to use just um, a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree and some ivory paint. Just trying to be as careful as I can. It's inevitable that you're going to kind of get some on the sign below, but... I kind of just take it one section at a time and try not to push down too much with that. This is the easiest way I have found to paint these signs. If you guys have any secrets about how you paint them, um, be sure to let a girl know in the comments below. I always love your all's tips. I just kind of went in with a baby wipe, tried to clean up any that went anywhere it wasn't supposed to, and then went in with another coat to make sure it was nice and bright. Now I think it's already really beachy with these beautiful colors, but we're gonna add some seashells to it and make it extra coastal for Thanksgiving. But I did have lots of touching up to do. Now for the hanger, I am taking some of that twine that we were using earlier, stringing it in from the back, just tying knots on the front, and then we can go ahead and attach seashells. Again, we're gonna be using the tiny little seashells from Dollar Tree. These are the ones that come in the glass bottles. I kind of want a variety of them and scatter them all over. These little tiny starfish that I use, I get these on Amazon and I have those linked in my Amazon shop below. I love them. They go great with these little mini shells. They're all about the same scale. And just kind of scatter those all over the sign. Any of the areas that don't really have any letters from the thankful word. And then I'm just going to attach them they're all pretty small. They're easy to glue down with just a couple dots of hot glue. And I love how it turned out. I think it looks so pretty in this bright blue color and super beachy for Thanksgiving. The colors on the seashell and the colors of the sign, I think go really well together. Quick, easy DIY for your coastal Thanksgiving. I really hope you enjoyed all of these Thanksgiving DIYs we did today. I kind of made the first one and kind of went from there. It was inspiration for all these other pieces. And I'm really glad I stuck with like the teal and the white color scheme. I think it's really beautiful together. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite Thanksgiving DIY below, or just come say hello in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Enjoy.
Thank you to the following Crafty Beach members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Verna Noctigal, Nancy Warner, Julie Miller, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Butterfly Mama, and Maria Grace. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Your support really means a lot. If you would like to become a member of Crafty Beach, it's $4.99 a month, and you can join by hitting the Join button. And again, you're going to get early ad-free access to videos like this one. And if you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube things that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting. Happy Thanksgiving.